Well, I hope this is worth it. <sighs> the day had started very differently. I was in the Lake District at a secret location. I'd met up with Steve and we were talking about image quality and how Micro Four Three cameras are frequently criticised. We'd both seen comments in the past suggesting these aren't real cameras and that you can't use them for serious landscape photography. That's when I decided to make this video to set the record straight. I'll be telling you what I think is good and bad about using a Micro Four Three system for photographing the landscape. Now before we get too far, let me tell you a bit about what I've got in my bag and what camera I'm using today. The camera is a Panasonic G9 and I've got the Leica 12-60 kit lens that comes with it. Now there's two kit lenses with the G9. There's there's one that's a Panasonic 12 to 60 and then there's a Leica one which is a little bit more expensive but the quality is absolutely amazing. So as well as the Panasonic G9 and Leica lens I've actually got another Leica lens which is the 8 to 18 super wide angle and I've got this tiny little Panasonic 45 to 150 lens. One of the great things about Micro Four Thirds is the portability. You can get down low very easily but you can get in close and achieve great depth of field. Now because the sensor is so small you get a much greater depth of field than you do with full frame. In this shot I'm working at about 12 millimeters and I've got f8 and that's enough to get the foreground sharp as well as the background. Well, I've moved on to a new location. I found a great position at the, uh, the bottom of this lake and there's a river coming out and everything's so still. Now, I've got a neutral density grad on now because the sky's actually turned a little bit brighter. It's not clear blue anymore. And I've got a polarizer on as well. I'm using the polarizer in two ways. Firstly, I'm trying to look through the surface of the water. And the second way is I'm trying to emphasize the sky and create a, a reflection. So we'll see which one works best. We're a little bit further around the lake now, so what I'm doing is I've got the wide angle lens on, the 8 to 18, and I'm down at about 9, maybe 8 millimetres. The great thing I'm finding about G9 is its accessibility and ease of use. I can get really low with it because of the tilting screen and also the small size. And it means I can make the foreground room really large in the frame. And it gives you a completely different perspective on the, uh, on the landscape. So I'm going to do a few more shots like this, see if they work well. Well, I hope this is worth it. Oh. Eighty megapixel high resolution mode. Well, that looks like the last of the light, and it's the end of the day. Let's hope I've got some good shots. Now that you've watched the video from the day, let's take a closer look at a few of the photos. I'll be using them to explain what I like and don't like about shooting landscape photos with a Micro Four Thirds camera. The first benefit is the portability of the system. I mentioned the size and ease of use of the camera a few times in the video. 
Also, remember this clip of me climbing up the hill at the end of the day. If I'd been carrying a heavy camera and tripod around all day, I would have been absolutely exhausted at this point. That would definitely have shown up in me making poorer images. You also saw me using a tripod in several of the shots. Most of the time the tripod wasn't necessary. Take this image as an example. The shutter speed is two hundredths of a second at f8, so it's fine for hand holding. But where I did need to use a tripod, I could use a very lightweight one, which was just over a kilo, including the head. A lightweight camera system means you can use lightweight accessories with it. Even the filters I was using were tiny and very light. It means you don't tire as quickly, you can stay out for longer, and your landscape photography doesn't suffer. But there is a downside to this. Because the camera is so easy to work with handheld, you can become trigger happy and rush the shots. That's when the quality of your work will suffer. It's also why I still like to use a tripod for photographing landscapes with micro four thirds cameras. The next benefit to consider is depth of field. Most of the time I was shooting at around f7.1 to f8. Look at this example where the lens is at 14mm or 28mm in full frame terms and I'm still using f8. The foreground is in sharp focus and so is the background. Even this image where the lens was set at 36mm or 72mm in full frame terms, f8 gave enough depth of field. By working at f8 my shutter speeds are fast and the lens is performing well. But again, there is a downside. Shutter speeds can become very fast in bright conditions, even at low ISO settings. I've sometimes found it necessary to use neutral density filters to slow down the shutter speed, especially if I want to show movements in the scene. Now to image quality, which I've heard a lot of people criticise Micro Four Thirds cameras for. The first point is that the lens quality plays a big part in this. It shouldn't come as a surprise that when you use poor quality lenses, you get poor results. If you use lenses that are known to perform well, you get good results. But this is often ignored by the critics, and lenses don't need to cost the earth either. Take this little Panasonic 45 to 150 lens I use for this image. The price new in the UK is £175, but look at the detail it's captured. But something that can be an issue is lens distortion, especially with the extreme wide angle lenses. If we zoom in to the corners of this image at full magnification, we can see some distortion caused by the lens correction in Lightroom. Of course, you can get that with any ultra wide angle lens, but if I were to turn off the lens correction, the image would have noticeable barrel distortion compared to, say, a Pro Canon 16 to 35 lens. This makes how you process Micro Four Thirds RAW files very important. The lens correction in some RAW converters can be poor, but in others like DxO Photo Lab, it's excellent. Another point when processing Micro Four Thirds RAW files is that some adjustments can cause problems. For example, in Lightroom, it's very easy to over sharpen the RAW files. Other adjustments like the dehaze slider can also exaggerate noise in the image. And yes, you will see more noise in a Micro Four Thirds image than a full frame image. This is especially true in the shadows because of the way the sensors work. Micro Four Thirds sensors often have greater highlight recovery, but poor shadow recovery. This is the opposite of a lot of DSLRs and full frame cameras. To get the best image quality from Micro Four Thirds, you need to overexpose the image slightly and then reduce that exposure in processing. Don't expect to have lots of freedom to recover shadows, as they will reveal noise and have poor detail. Now to the question of image size, because the G9 only has a 20 megapixel sensor. This gives a print size of around 21 by 16 inches at 240 dpi. Now some of you watching this will be saying, sure, but I want to be able to make bigger prints. Well you can. You can easily double the dimensions of these images in Photoshop and still produce excellent print detail. And if you use something like Topaz Gigapixel, you can go much larger than that. But there's another trick up the sleeve of some Micro Four Thirds cameras, which is the high resolution mode. In the video, I use the 80 megapixel high resolution mode towards the end of the day. Here's one of those images. When I zoom into full magnification, the detail looks superb. Also notice that I shot this image at ISO 800 and it's noise free. The high resolution processing seems to be great at removing any image noise when it generates the final RAW file. Looking at the results from the images I shot, it reinforces my opinion that Micro Four Thirds cameras are great for landscape photography. But you do need to take care when processing the RAW file. That's why I recommend you watch this video next.